I became a software engineer with a real job offer within four months of writing my first ever line of code, but most people struggle a lot with learning the code and landing a job as a software engineer, and I don't want you to be one of them, which is why I make these videos. Coding is one of the most valuable and in-demand skills in the world, and there's a ton of different reasons to learn to code in today's world, but if you're learning to code, it's very important to understand why you are learning to code. You could be learning it to become a data scientist, to become an AI engineer, to automate boring tasks at your current job or simply as a hobby. But in this video, I will specifically talk about how I would learn to code to become a software engineer that is someone who uses code to develop real software for companies and who gets paid for it. And so the steps that I will tell you in this video are exactly how I would go from zero to a real job offer as a software engineer. So your first step is not actually to open up a code file and start coding. There's actually a step involved in the beginning that most people ignore, but it is absolutely crucial. And that is, you should actually spend some time to understand what software development actually is. And by the way, in this video, I'm gonna use the words software developer and software engineer kind of interchangeably because these two things practically mean the exact same thing. Now you'll be surprised how many people wanna become software engineers or software developers, but they can't actually describe what software development actually is is because it is actually a lot more than just coding and therefore becoming a software developer is a lot more than just learning to code. So to understand what software development is, we need to break this term down. First of all, what is software? Well, simply software is any technology that you cannot touch. For example, a mobile app, a website, a backend of a bank that processes transactions, the software inside of this microphone that records my audio right now. All of this is software. It is technology that is intangible. That is technology that we're gonna touch and like see with our eyes and hands. Whereas the actual microphone and the actual mobile phone and the actual computer are what are called hardware. This is technology that we can see and touch with our own human senses. So that is software. Then we have a development. Software development just means developing software, so producing software from scratch. Essentially what this is, is the entire process to go from a blank code editor file to a bunch of files of code that work together to produce this functioning piece of software that real world users can use. And developing this software actually involves a lot more than simply writing the code. Because what software development really is, is just a series of decisions. Decisions about which languages to use, which, which technologies to use, how to organize your software team in the most efficient way to develop this software as fast and efficiently as possible. Decisions about which features to build and which features to not build. And as someone who has built his own tech startup as the lead engineer, I can tell you that a lot of these decisions are actually a lot more important for the software development process than the actual code. Now you don't need to understand all of this right away. In fact, once you get to the rest of the steps, you'll see how we sort of build this knowledge over time, which is good to spend a bit of time understanding what software development actually means and also specifically to understand things about how the industry works, what are the major players, what are the different kinds of software developer roles out there so you can understand what you are getting into. Now to learn all of this in a lot more detail than what I can describe to you in this video, I recommend you take the free software development introductory course by Course Careers. We'll talk about Course Careers more in a second because what that free course will give you is a full breakdown and a full introduction to the software development industry and what it actually means to be a software engineer. So as your first actionable step, go take that free course and then we can move on. And as your step two, you're going to learn the technical skills that are needed for you to just have the technical ability to know how to function as a software developer in the real world. Now, before we talk about what skills you should learn, there's two broad options for these. Option number one is the DIY path, where you essentially find a lot of online resources, online tutorials, YouTube videos like this one, and you learn all the skills one by one from all kinds of different resources. And option number two is that you choose and follow one guided program that's simply gonna teach you everything you need to know from zero in the correct order all the way to having all the skills you need to land your first job as a software developer. Now, both of these can work. I personally actually went through the DIY path because at the time I was completely broke. I didn't have the money for all these more premium resources, so it can be done. But had I chosen a more premium, a more guided program, I would have certainly got there a lot faster. I would have wasted a lot less time because as a beginner, you don't really know what you should learn. You don't know what you should not learn. So to learn in the most efficient way possible and to ensure 
ensure you get into the industry as fast as possible if you do have the cash for it and you're willing to invest in yourself i do recommend investing into a program like course careers who are actually the most premium the most tailored way for you to go from zero to a real software engineering job in as little as three to four months now why do i recommend course careers specifically well it's because course careers is not just a program that teaches you the skills it's also a platform where you can get hired directly because what they do is they first teach you everything you need to know to become a software developer and then what will happen is that companies are reaching out to course careers directly to find good candidates because they know that people who go through course careers are going to have the skills that they need which means that if you go through the program you might be approached by employers directly by course careers without you having to send a single job application yourself on top of this you obviously get a full program where essentially you first learn the foundations of software development then after that you can choose a specialization from three options based on what kind of software developer you want to become you also get full mentorship you get a resume builder that will essentially just spit out to you a perfectly formatted and optimized resume you also get access to a full community of thousands of other learners where you can also speak to the instructors of the program who are by the way some famous tech youtubers like tech with tim where they've simplified and people like this that is what course careers gives you and that is why i've partnered with them to make this video the link for that free course that you can get started with is going to be down below in the description and with that said let's talk a bit more in detail about the kinds of skills technical skills that you will want to learn what you will always start with is one programming language that you will use to learn the foundations of coding learning how coding syntax works and specifically learning to get used to the logic of programming and how to sort of think through coding problems and things like this this is something that you cannot do without simply practicing 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 a lot so what you're going to do is learn some of the foundations of programming and then just practice a lot of problems build a lot of projects yourself to get the hang of what coding means and how to actually do it proficiently now what language you pick and things like this will depend on what kind of software developer you want to become for example if you want to become a mobile developer you're probably going to start with swift if you want to become an ai engineer you're going to start with python but probably for you you probably don't know at this point right yeah you don't really know you just want to explore so in that case it doesn't really matter too much which language you pick because at the end of the day almost all programming languages are very very similar so just pick any language learn to code and then after that you can make the decision about what kind of developer you want to become and that will inform you what other sort of what we call frameworks and libraries and tools tools and things like this you're going to have to learn to build your what we call tech stack of the different technologies and languages and frameworks that will give you the skills to get hired if you go through a program like course careers they will obviously just teach all of this to you in the right order in the right kind of way so you don't need to worry about this but if you're doing it yourself then you're just going to have to do a bit more research to figure this out for yourself as your third step you want to start building projects i cannot stress how important this step is because while you're going to learn to code you can learn coding syntax by just studying it this step is where you actually learn to become a software developer you're starting from very small projects you're going to start to build the understanding of what it actually means to build a full scale piece of software from scratch to me this is also the most exciting part like this is so freaking cool that you with just your computer can build a real functioning app or a website or whatever you want to build just from zero so the way i would get started with this just think of something that you'd really want to build like a website for example or a mobile app or whatever you're building and just start from very small just figure out how to build like a very small functioning version of a website that's some text that shows up on the screen or something like that and then perhaps you add a button and then you figure out okay if i click this button then something will happen some message will pop up things like this so piece by piece you just start building more and more features to your application and that will actually teach you how to think about building a real piece of software you're starting to combine different things perhaps you've learned about things like apis now you're actually learning how to actually create an api or actually how to use an api in the context of a real project and as you do this and as you build more and more complex projects this is where you're going to start to realize okay it's pretty important for me to choose okay do i use this framework or that framework okay this framework has these advantages this makes it a bit quicker to do this you start to understand all of these decisions that go into building software obviously this won't be at the same scale as you'll notice these decisions in a real job but you sort of start to understand little by little all these little decisions that go into building a real piece of functioning software and this will also obviously make you more and more fluent at coding because the more you do it the better at it you get so as your actual 
step here is choose one slightly more complex project than you think you can build and just go step by step and try to build that project. And you'll notice that once you get to the point where you build a piece of functioning software, you will essentially be a software developer because now you have built a real piece of software. So congratulations, you're a software developer well, almost, because there's still one more, or I guess two more things that you need to consider. And the next step, which is step number four, is to learn the non-technical skills. While you can build simple software on your own by just following the first few steps, to become a real software engineer at a real company, building something much bigger is not enough to just have the technical skills. You also need to have the non-technical skills. What do I mean by this? Well, this simply means that you need to be able to function in a real software team. And this involves a lot more than simply understanding how to code. So what do I mean by non-technical skills? Really, there's some two main ones. It's number one, having the right attitude. And number two, being a fast and capable learner. When you go into a new job, especially if it's a big company, there's gonna be the first few weeks, even the first few months, where you're not really going to be that useful because it just takes time for you to get used to and understand how to use everything that you're using. But what you want to cultivate is just having the right attitude. Specifically, what this means is that just having the attitude of I am here to learn, I am here to do as well as I possibly can and help this company as much as I possibly can. Sure, I might not know everything right at the start, but I am willing to learn. This is the attitude that they all want to see. This is just being a fast and capable learner. This really just comes from practice and it really just comes from having the right attitude because if you're willing to learn, if you want to learn, then eventually you're always gonna be able to figure it out. So remember, it's not enough to just have the technical skills. I've seen so many programmers like coder people who can be pretty good at the technical stuff but they just don't understand how to function in a team they don't understand how to work with people i guess that that's the third one be good at working with people be good to work with understand how to communicate things well in real english not just in code because it will make it so much easier for them to explain stuff to you when you can actually understand you can communicate the questions you have to so develop the right non-technical skills and as your last step you need to learn to play the game of the job market of course if you go through a program like course careers like i mentioned you might not have to learn it because they might just sort of do this for you but if you're not doing that then there's several things that you will need to learn and this is not going to be fun by the way you as a programmer are probably excited about coding you're not excited about making resumes and learning how to prepare for interviews and things like this but it is just something that you're going to have to do first you're going to have to learn that simply applying online is not effective companies within their online job opening portals they get so many applications that even if you have the perfect application they might never see it which is why you need to learn how to find sort of ways to get around the online application system how to actually approach this company Companies directly speak to the actual humans making the decisions super important the next thing is you're gonna to have to learn about how to make a good resume if you haven't properly learned how to make a good resume I'm 99% certain that your resume is going to suck you need to learn how to prepare for interviews the sort of psychology of the interviews like what kinds of people they're actually looking for now all of this is not gonna be fun and if it sounds confusing to you then I actually made a full guide on specifically this last part of the process where I go into detail detail about all of these things and what it means to make a good resume, what it means to bypass the job application system and actually get hired and things like this. And because this video is quite long already, I don't want to repeat all of that here. So as your next step, go watch this video where I go through this full guide with you, where I teach you all of these things and how to master the game of the job market. Go watch that video next and I'll see you in the next one.